Hey, aloha, and um, welcome to Korean Natural Farming Office Hours uh, with me, uh, Dr. Drake, just me today. Um, although this year has been great, I've had a bunch of guests here and folks that were here for the class. Um, but before we get into all that and more Korean Natural Farming, um, Start off with a little bit of eaching here. Hey, what's up, you guys? What's up, Thomas? Long time, man. Earthbound Organics. Western Australia in the house. Um, let's see here. Okay, today. It's a good one for us. <clears throat> You're starting a new Chinese New Year, right? Uh, happy rabbit teal. So... Today is corners of the mouth, providing nourishment. And it says, give proper nourishment to yourself and others. To yourself and others. The image of this hexagram is that of an open mouth. It comes to remind us that the nourishment of our bodies and spirits is important. And it merits our conscientious attention. The I Ching teaches us that if we wish to gauge someone's character, we should notice what he nourishes in himself and in others. Those who cultivate inferior behaviors and relationships are inferior people. Those who cultivate superior qualities in themselves and others are superior people. This is a test we should apply to ourselves as well as to others. What you put in your body is obviously important because it determines your fundamental physical well-being and it is wise to be moderate and thoughtful about the food you eat. What you put into your mind is even more significant and regulating it is a more subtle art. This hexagram gives us three part advice on the subject. The first counsel is that we should not feed our minds on desire. When we forgo equanimity and begin to desire something or someone, a host of inferior influences come into play and we become ambitious about obtaining the object of our desire. We become fearful that we will not if we do achieve it, our ego is gratified and strengthened, and then it soon issues another demand for us to meet. This self-reinforcing cycle of negativity is thus created. Therefore, it's wise to hold yourself free from desire. The second counsel is that we begin and continue in a practice of regular meditation. Sitting quietly with your eyes closed for as little as 10 to 15 minutes can let the sage begin to clear the waste out of your hearts and minds, making room for the nourishment of peace and wisdom to enter in. To sit in meditation is to tune your ear to the voice of the sage. And it is the most powerful way of gaining his assistance. The final counsel is we observe tranquility in speech, thoughts, and actions. By cultivating calm and equanimity in all that you say, think, and do, you nourish your superior self and those around you. One who follows these three counsels now will meet with good fortune. So... Yeah, that's a good thing to do there. Um, nourish each other. Nourish ourselves. I think that's why you're tuned in here. You're probably growing better food than most people. Sharing that with the world, the open mouth, their thoughts, actions, all these things, lining them up. Hey, what's up, Daniel? He was just over here yesterday. Um, so, yeah. 
So this past, um, I just want to share with you guys, you know, for 2020, uh, 2023 coming up, I was thinking for office hours, you know, uh, I like sharing like this past year, you know, sharing with the office hours of Master Cho, unless there was somebody here to, um, you know, to be part of the show. Um, but largely, you know, going over Master Cho's presentations, those things, um, and, but the last couple episodes, if I look at the content here and I go live and then I swap these over here where I go, oh, let's see here. It's way over here. Share screen, share screen side by side. That'll work that you can see over here. Uh, the last, well, there's this episode happening right now live. But the last two episodes uh, of January this year have been with a guest, and that's been a whole a lot of fun to share with guests and um, to interview them and to find out how, you know, natural farming has been successful, not just in my life and understanding Master Cho's teachings here, um, but also sharing, you know, with guests here, uh, this one, this last one here. Uh, had uh, Daniel and Ben coming out, and so it's nice to see um, you guys, and Daniel's here today, and he was here on this episode here, January 8th as well. So I was thinking, um, if you want to be part of the um, KNF office hours for 2023 and share and show what you're doing um, being able to interview you through the internet here would be a good way to reach out. And, um, you know, even if you want to put together a little presentation or anything like that. And speaking of that, I did, I did get a bunch of emails. Uh, so let me just pull those up right here a little quickly and bring this over here. And go back to this. Oh, it's always fun to run a live show and do the right thing here. Where I got some requests from some folks. Um, and here's one from Stonemason. He's here today. And I'll transition this over here and share this. Um, here's his. Uh, what is it? It's cucumber vinegar. Cucumber vinegar. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Look at that. The cucumbers floating in there. It's like pickles gone wild. <laughs> There's him. Look at that nice mother that he has on top pulling off there. Nice, nice, nice. And then, oh, look at that. It looks like a kidney or something. These are the best React videos on the internet, by the way. <laughs> at these things, <laughs> comparing scobies. Uh, and ooh, look at that! Wow, is he is he weighing it? I'm not exer sure exactly there. And what's up, the goof man? Good to see you from New York. So he sent me he sent me these pictures of a, a cucumber vinegar. Wild! Look at that. So um, you know, as long as you're pH is below 2.4. You're good to go. Let's see here. Um, and then well, who else? I get th so thanks for that. Thanks for that, Stonemason. Great to see. Um, oh, okay. And then um, here, George. George sent this email here. Um, where he's doing a time lapse on his Instagram. So let me see if I can pull that up right here. Okay. So you guys can see this. And so this, here's a time lapse of his. I think these are just sprouts, microgreens, maybe. I need to put a clock there so you can see the time. Oh, the clock's at the top. Never mind. The one that would spin, though, that'd be cool. Oh my gosh, look at those microgreens. Yeah, yeah. Hey, th th well, thank you for sharing, Stone Mason. Look at these microgreens. Okay, wait, I'm gonna watch that one more time. So, look at these. So, I think he might be using natural farming on these solutions and spritzing them. I'm not sure exactly, uh, but look at these things. Wow, 
the plants, like when you slow it down, they're all like alive and living, you know, like or when you speed them up, I guess a better way of saying it. So that's cool. Um, and it's a sneak peek into making a test rig for testing Korean natural farming solutions on microgreens. Okay. So that's what it is. And he's doing a little time-lapse uh, growth solution on that. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome, man. And then it says here, I plan to make a short video, show the steps to offer them and get some ingredients. Um, and he's, and so check this out. I mean, here, let's see if I can get a better transition that over. Here's his solutions here. And it looks like that's a little, his little, maybe that's his time-lapse camera. It looks like a webcam here. Maybe he just set his webcam up to do a, um, time-lapse and maybe he's, uh, what does that say? Oh, can of fuel? Maybe he's time-lapsing the fuel? No. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, and then he has these, you know, the worksheets. It looks like that's uh, printouts from the book there. Uh, on the recipe for each one. Oh, yeah. It's, so that's the fuel recipe there. And then that's that. That's the lactic acid bacteria recipe. That's that. Oh, it, this is a, this is actually... This is actually a really nice way to display this. If you look at this in front of here, there's like the the recipe from the book printed out, and then there's the um, solution right here. Like this is a vinegar, and then that's probably the vinegar recipe. Wow. Hey, this is cool, and I like how it's lit up and stuff with the Christmas lights. Like this is pretty inviting for people to um to check out. Yeah, yeah. This is a great way to um display Korean natural farming like I would I would um I would walk over to this and be like hey check this out and look at these solutions I I want to I want to get these out so that we can put these into like poster board format so we can see these and put them above the solution so it'd be like you know you get a full on like just just like it was in um you know in Korea that, that's that's how they did you know learning center like this nice man that's that's beautiful I like I like the Latvian experience there of uh getting it getting it together um so let's see um and since since it's kind of i don't know maybe it's kind of nosy but i'll just go on your instagram a little bit because and see what you're doing here i remember you shared the this let me see here if i can transition that one there um, I remember you shared with me some of these photos. Um, oh yeah, here you make a lacto. There's the garden. Oh, and then they want me to sign up. No, I don't want to. Arr, let me go. I can't scroll it. I gotta refresh it if you want to see that again. They trapped me. I will not sign in. Um, yeah, so, so check these out. I mean, like there he is teaching here. Um, or at least somebody's teaching there. I don't know. Maybe I maybe it's not George, but um, this, this collection box, uh, making the raised beds. I, I wonder how his harvest went. I don't see too many of the harvest pictures. Now he's on to microgreen. So hopefully everything went well for him. Um, I don't know. A little nosy to go spy on someone's Instagram while while they're there. But um, but um, I do um. Yeah, make uh, Thomas says he's about to make grapefruit vinegar, and he'll try to take pictures to send. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. Um, I was just doing uh, vinegar from um, bananas, and uh, I need to make more. We we made more of it the class. Well, sp speaking of, that's actually the other thing that I was going to do here is I was gonna pull up um, just a few photos here. Um, I don't know, you know, I, actually, let me just put it on this side and then do this and just transition that over. That'll be fine. So, um, so during the class, I, I don't know if I got into this or talked about this yet. I don't, I don't think so. Um, but we went over to Moose's farm, uh, and there's, there's Daniel again and Ben. <laughs> And um, so we went over to Bayfront Kava, which is um, somebody I've been following for for a while. Uh, Perilla would make a um, 
perilla sesame seed uh, sesame would make a really good um can of food the plant juice out of that um but we went over to moose's um moose's yeah farm and he grows ava hawaiian kava i probably said that a couple times already now but there says bayfront kava and then these are the little kava starts in his nursery area and then um let's see here what am i doing i'm on this screen okay and then um i'll just show you some of these photos there's heather pedro um we went down sorry it took a lot i guess I, oh so so here's the ava growing and here here's his knf um you know things happening here um you know here's the kava and if you look at it you know there's very little disease on his kava whereas in hawaii right now um you know you, you can look through the photos and you'll see but you'll see more disease on the leaves he also has like a lemongrass border here nice mulched underneath um Here's more of his uh, ava. This is a mangosteen tree here on this side. Um, and then all this ava. And now he's been using a little bit more weed mat. A little bit more young song cho, jadam. What's up, what's up? What's up, good family? Yo, Mitchell. Um, here's more of his ava here. You know, it's growing, bunching out from the center. Um, grows from these cuttings. Like one of these knuckles will, will be cut here and here and then put into the ground. A new planting will come out of these knuckles. And then those knuckles are placed and it's planted. And these are looking good, you know, minimal weed pressure, especially as this canopy gets up. Uh, and he's been spraying KNF every other week, every week, something like that. Here's more of it, you know, looking nice, nice maturing plants. Uh, out in direct sun now, really, you know, experiencing good and then you know his ground covers he's managing weed mats those things here's more of the um weed mat between ava and then um taro hawaiian kalo starfruit tree uh, maybe a mangosteen maybe not um but a lot of ava here and um do it yourself humic acid man from the worm farm worm farm Worms are your friends. They make humic acid in the ground. So this, here's my class. Um, Shay, Pedro, uh, Daniel, uh, Leah, uh, Brittany, Ben, Daniel, <laughs> two Daniels, and Heather. And all checking out with Moose here. And Moose took my class in 2019. Um, then, you know, um, these guys just took it this past January. Um and i'm not sure about the video you're talking about but all these folks um you know tuning in getting you know checking out past students seeing seeing it happen in real life um and everyone checking all this out the guava vinegar we had yeah it's good um so and we went out on a mooses too i think right maybe not um but I've been going cruising down to his farm. It's a great example. You know, he's out there every day, not every day, but most days farming. They got a lot of money behind this to make this product and sell it and have a whole marketing plan. It really makes sense. You know, um, here's Daniel holding up this nice collar that Moose grew that he had so much taro, he just left some in the field. He didn't even know what to do with it. So we need, to, obviously we need to get um, our farmer's markets going a little bit better get more people tuned in to how to give food and trade food and get those things uh, advanced here. Um, there's Moose chilling in front of his Alva, talking about how easy it is. Um, yeah. So, and then I'm sure towards the end of this, um, oh, there's a nice group photo. So, or there's a better one maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a bit of video of just, um, you know, shooting there. And I've been shooting video over time at his farm to watch it change. And so eventually he put together, you know, a nice micro documentary. And we'll see. You know. But getting footage, just tracking, you know, the improvements of a farmer's farm over time to see how KNF has changed. You know, look at these leaves. They're really nice. The new, the new leaves, you know, the old ones hanging on. 
a lot of good coverage there. Um, you know, healthy thick stems, no disease on the stem. You know, a few holes, few holes, but doing pretty good. He does have a bungee top on his bananas, <laughs> which I do too right now. So I've been spraying lactobacillus every... I sprayed it with Pedro, which by the way, Pedro, if you're watching, I don't know, maybe you're watching it later. Everything's flowering since we sprayed. Um, gonna, I sprayed again last week. Going to continue spraying. Um, putting a gallon of maintenance out on the farm a week, um, plus seawater, plus a uh, little bit of fuel. And, um, yeah, just farming it up, man. And, oh, other thing too is today is the first day of significant rain. It's been pretty much a drought here since, um, mid-December. It hasn't rained. Today's the first day it's raining, so hallelujah. Um, God bless. It's raining. <laughs> like, thank you. Um, and our water tank was almost down all the way. So, anyway, kind of ranting on a bunch of this stuff, but um, I, hopefully, you're enjoying the images of Moose's farm. There are companies here on the island that will do what they call like responsible land clearing, where you're not just bulldozing everything and pushing it to the edge to see, to, you know, positively affect that which we can. That's what's so cool about the, you know, utilizing the microbes. And on it, to be honest, I wish I could uh, utilize more of the Korean natural farming here. Um, just like I said, I've, I've definitely been able to use the, you know, foliar spraying. But, um, you know, it's, it's kind of cool about it is like, you can really take it however far go you know, up to the point where you're, you're mixing making and you know, literally spreading the microbes around we kind of um, you know through our foliar spraying and creating the healthier plants it's changing you know what's happening underneath the ground because then the plants aren't as susceptible to some of these other pests that want to get in there and damage things and then you create that and then you're leaving that for the next generation and, um, you know, it just it just goes on and on and on. It's just like this endless world of the soil food web that you know. You, you know, I watched Kiss the Ground. I don't know if you guys have seen that film. Yeah, yeah. And I, I watched that, and it's just like, you know, I taken I watched that in maybe 2021, and I'd taken Drake's class like two years before that, so it taken some time, but it like really kind of all started to click. It's like you, you know, with a small piece of land, you actually. You know, you can make a difference. And that's why I like farming. Have you used fire plants in any of your past Uh-huh. Yeah. Some. Have you seen any difference? Um, it'd kind of be hard to quantify. So, yeah. So, good to check in with Moose, see all his stuff growing. Yeah. Daniel's there. Ishmael's forest farming. That's Daniel. He's saying Moose is the man. It was inspiring to see his approach of concentrating on Hawaiian crops and starting trying to force European crops to grow. Um, yeah, and the farm animals need that water. Um, also, other news on the Canna farm that um, is going on is we got a cow. Um, not uh, we've, we've had a couple cows. I've increased my herd from uh, one to five. Um, but we got a cow in milk. And so we've been making a bunch of um, lactobacillus and all kinds of um, good stuff. Yeah, here's, I don't know, you probably can't see it. But no, it's reflecting back. Um, yeah, there's Sue's milking our milk cow, getting out there making it happen. Um, we're going to get a milky machine. In fact, I got to buy one today. Um, so, uh, thanks for super chats. <laughs> um, farming ain't cheap or easy and taking time out to do this. It's actually, it's nice. I, um, appreciate the community and everything. So, um, yeah, so we have one milk cow, two, two, um, uh, Wagyu beef cows and two black or one black Angus or Actually, excuse me, she's a red Angus, 
and then one um, red Angus mixed with a um, Holstein. So we have some interesting cows on the farm now. Um, but milking this cow is no joke every day, like gallons of milk. But it also means gallons of LAB, and it also means that um, we're we're excuse me, we are more able to you know t today is about nourishment, nourishing the the food, the open mouth, right? Um, so with this, we're able to more nourish um, our animals directly, ferment you know, turn grass into proteins, feed that to the chickens, feed that to the pigs really close our farm loop and the cow integrated animal farming korean natural farming is the key and so i've been up um spraying the pastures as well um with seawater maintenance solution a uh, little bit of fuel you know i guess and a lot of protectors a lot of whey now that we're generating so much whey um, putting that out there on the pastures, trying to really encourage those to grow. And um, looking forward to doing a drone shot. I just flew my drone over the other day, but to put together a drone. I've been droning my land for the past um, year, two years, three years. I don't know, since 2020. Um, and with that, um, you know, seeing how the pastures progress and how Korean natural farming has changed my, you know, plus changing grazing behavior and all that, but seeing how Korean natural farming has, has changed this whole, you know, thing with it, with a drone time lapse, I think would be really, um, really powerful to see. And the cow pen, um, does not have a living floor. It's just a cow barn right now. Um, I, I probably, I was talking to Suze about it right now. It's, it's been so dry for the past two months, basically. Um, but now that it's getting wet again, I probably will need to move up um, wood chips into the barn and then to inoculate those. So it'll be a, you know, and then to pull out the manure if she if she makes waste in her uh, pen. Um, and so, yeah, just using natural farming that way to keep down the odor. Um, and also we just had a thing where she almost uh, got mastitis. Uh, in one of her um, teats was had the kind of a solid stuff coming out and the milk was a little watery um, so Suze was able to fix that with garlic and turmeric and putting microbes in her food now we're fermenting her feed and we're just supplementing a little bit of feed for the cow um, to to you know have you know because we're taking milk from her so we're supplementing a little bit of store-bought feed right now um, but eventually I think we could replace that feed with something like sugar cane um, or, you know, fruits and chopped up um, something, something good for her that would be high caloric intake, you know, um, right now it's some sort of grain thing. I actually got to look into what it is. We just bought it the other day because we just randomly got a dairy cow. <laughs> it just came up, came our way and we, we were able to do it. So, um. And it's really, it's really changed our lives on the farm. I can tell you having uh, natural farming, having a dairy cow, having lactobacillus, having, you know, and now, uh, it, <laughs> now I, I don't know if I should share it here, but, um, you know, getting in, getting into the sugar, getting into the dairy, you know, um, th this is, this is like almost a new level of sovereignty on the farm of new level of like, you know, having everything we need here. Um, the, the cow is a game changer having natural farming having you know pretty much everything we need i you know i didn't even leave you know i go into town once a week now i basically turned into like a you know a natural farmer in the woods growing my beard and chewing my mustache and um and so yeah so we're, we're putting um we're putting imo4 and lactobacillus into our dairy cows feed now and that's really been you know we'll see the results but it's it's going to be huge and beneficial here um yeah <laughs> yeah so um so with this um you know i wanted with that sharing the class everything wrapped up all good i did um you know i do want to interview more 
um, guests here on the show and do that and get, you know, get more people involved, share. Oh, th- thanks for super chats, keeping the, keeping the milk flowing, keeping the, keeping the guys going. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, and Stonemason here is talking about, uh, reading, um, uh, Mycelium Running, it's right here on the shelf behind me, by Paul Stamets, and, um, yeah, giving you all kinds of ideas, that's, that's great, incorporate it with KNF, and Paul Stamets, um, I, I don't know if you know, hang on, let me pull this up real quick here, and, um, go just look, um, And just for this here, Paul Stamets, HFUU. Um, no, no, you know why it's showing me ad? Is this an ad? No, it's not. It's it's by. Um. Anyway, I was gonna look for Paul Stamets talking about. Um, he he came. Um. Let me just see if I can find this HFUU. Hang on, let me just see. Pause that. Go here and then look up on their channel for Paul Paul Isaac, Paul Tresseter, Paul Stamets. Yeah, here. Okay, so here. Um. Uh, um. Transition is over. So here on the on the HFUU channel, um, they had Paul Stamets being interviewed, um, and I'll link this right now. I'll just throw this in the chat, um, and then go to where the end of this video. So there's some Micah Nelson playing. As uh, as you and, and is he playing speaker series to open it up by one. But a Willie Nelson's son, Micah Nelson, playing some stuff there, and then then they interviewed Paul Stamets here. This is not sustainable. We have to look at sustainable systems, and with a worldwide crisis in phosphorus, uh, we have very little alternative except we have a great solution, and that is reinvesting in fungal networks. So that's what I kind of want to bring to the table is regenerative culture, uh, agriculture is really a, a sustainable over the long term. Conventional agriculture is not sustainable in the short term. So I think that's something that people should be aware of. Yeah, and right on, Paul. Thank you for that. And, you know, a, a, an agricultural icon. Uh, this is, I think, a really good idea. It's like, um, you know, this, this uh, concept of effective microorganisms and for a while, I was a little skeptical about it, but as I dug into it more, basically you're using the complexity of the microbiome uh, and then you're making applications of it. So uh, we just um, was awarded a grant from NASA for uh, terraforming uh, Mars and asteroids uh, using fungi. And Astromycology. So, yeah, no, it's like coming out. No, there's, there's going to be a press release coming out of NASA in a, in a few weeks. and. And this is uh, really exciting because what we have to grow plants. We have to create soil. So fungi were the first organisms that came to land. They started munching rocks basically on the beach or the tidal, the, the tidal zones or the lakes, which, you know, go up and down. But at those margins where it's, it's uh, you know, an aqueous environment dries, aqueous and dries, those margins at that interface is where life basically leaked out of the water. And then when these fungi started munching rocks, then algae then associated, lichens formed, and then mycorrhizal fungi then, you know, developed a handshake relationship symbiotically with plants. And then it became a love affair that continues to this day. Love it. Well, you know, um, here on, in Hawaii, we've been working hard to create our hemp industry, you know, to have our hemp farm. So, you know, so, there, there's some really so nice I think he was talking happening about on a national level, uh, thanks to your work. And uh, I wanted to take a look. There's a question here. You know, uh, our president of the East Hawaii chapter is a leader in uh, Korean natural farming practices, uh, also educates, is an educator in that respect. And he, and, uh, he was basically 
um, saying, you know, and, and I, I've also, uh, I'm a practitioner in that we're growing our fungal networks through uh, harvesting indigenous microorganisms from the forest and then, uh, you know, culturing that on mill run of wheat, which is basically we had that tested and mill run of wheat is actually loaded with biostimulants. So we're able to then take that product as a compost in a sense, um, uh, grow it out with just regular soil, and then that becomes even stronger to dress the plants with to grow the, the fungal network. So, um, so you're talking about 75 years of remediating. Um, it seems like we're, we're getting some traction just by going down this road. Can you, uh, have, you have you had any experience around uh, Master Cho's work with what he's doing with uh, using on-farm inputs? No, I'm, uh, a little bit, but the whole concept of transplantation of a microbiome from a healthy ecosystem into another ecosystem, uh, this is, I think, a really good idea. It's like, um, you know, this, this uh, concept of effective microorganisms. And for a while, I was a little skeptical about it, but as I dug into it more, basically, you're using the complexity of the microbiome, uh, and then you're making applications of it. So uh, we just... Um, was awarded a grant from NASA. So yeah, so there's there's Paul Stamets directly, well, indirectly through Vince of Vince's. I, it would be cool if I had got to talk to Paul directly and, uh, but through the chat, through Vince answering a question about um, IMO and, and KNF and yeah, he, he likes it, right? You know, it's, um, it's it, you know, um, I, I would love to be able to, sit down with Paul and spend, you know, a couple of days just uh, showing him some of the solutions we have and, you know, collaborating with what he has. Um, but there he is, like, through somebody, um, you know, answering that, yeah, KNF is affirmative and transplanting the microbiomes. And, you know, at first he was skeptical, but now he sees the applications of it. And it's like, it's cool to hear, right? World-leading mycologist. You know, since you mentioned him and since I had it here and since, you know, that's like as close as I've been to Paul Stamets. But um, but Micah, Micah Nelson's a good friend of mine. You know, I, I hope he would say the same thing about me. Um, but, you know, we've met each other through the union and hanging out and buddies and things. So, um, but yeah, to go, up, you know, hang out with Paul, maybe go up, you know, my wife's from Washington, maybe go cruise up there and hang out with Paul a little bit and... Or you could come here to Hawaii and stay at our Airbnb, which is pretty epic and awesome. And um, just, you know, had some great folks stay here and awesome. But um, so, yeah, anyway, Paul Stamets, great guy talking about mycelia, talking about this. He had he does know about Korean natural farming to a degree, right? You know, he knew, he knew it was that. And um, speaking of Korean natural farming, speaking of this, you know, you can watch that. I linked it up above. Um, yeah, the huts, the huts, the farm huts. Yeah. Um, so speaking of all that, speaking of all that, bringing, bringing this mic over a little bit. So I'm not leaning so far out of the frame here and still talking good into the mic. Um, let's, let's dive into a little bit of Master Cho's works here. Um, I'm, I'm going to continue <laughs> The translation of this, um, but I would love to talk with you. Comment below. No. <laughs> Get enough of that on YouTube, right? It's like everyone. The entire point of their um, their YouTube is to sell you an ad. And now brought to you by, you know, it's like, man, did I watch this whole video just to have a masterworks painting presented to me? Um, but no, you instead you watch this whole video to have nothing but solutions given to you. You know, and, and your generosity back to us at your own, you know, thank you, bird, super chats. And anyway, people say I talk shit about money or whatever, but no, I need it and it's good. Please send it to me. Super chats are appreciated. Um, so fermented plant juice, uh, I call it can of food because fermented plant juice, they also will make fermented fruit juice. They will also make fermented flower juice. They will change this and then this acronym changes and some folks out there will have from FFJ, like fermented fruit juice, as if it's a different thing. And I'm here to tell you, I hate to spoil it for you, I hate, no, I'd love to bring in the good information, actually. Love to bring enlightened into a new world. 
of just call it KNF food and don't worry about what source it comes from the plants, the food, or the plants, the fruits, the flowers. You will use them differently and label them differently, but the acronym just this is telling you fermented plant juice. It's telling you what it does. You're fermenting a plant juice. It doesn't tell you how to use it, right? Can of food, it tells you how to use this, right? Immediately. It's like, oh, I know. Fermented plant juice. How do I use that? Well, mm. but as a food, can of food, it's like food is used all the time at the right amount. And the more you can match it to your plant, the more you can match it to your growth stage, the better results you're going to have by applying the correct food, the correct time, the right amount, right, you know, everything like that. Right amount, right time, right, um, there's four rights. You got to get right. And I can only think of two. So this fermented plant juice, I call it canna food. Makes sense in a lot of ways to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you. And let's get into it. So here, the can of food is a fermented extract of plants, right? So that explains exactly what it is, right? This here has that name, fermented extract of plants. The extract part is done via very dry materials, such as sugar and a little bit of salt, if necessary. Salt is not always necessary. So it's an extract, osmotic extract. It's not a grind it's not a pulverization, it's not a smashing, it's not a squeezing, it's a fermented extract, meaning like extract like tincturing, but this is fermentation. It's pulling through without grinding. Um, it helps crops absorb nutrients directly for growing healthy and enabling their potentiality. Go figure on that Kringlish, but I think this is what, it, you know, the first First statement is what it is, which it's a fermented extract of plants. The second is why and what it what it does, and it's basically a food, right? What does food do? It helps, um, it helps whatever you're feeding absorb nutrients directly for growing healthy and enabling their potentiality, right? That's what a food does, right? So if I'm not mistaken here, this is you know what it is. This is why you'd use it, right? Why, why would you use it? Because, you know, why would you feed plants? You want them to grow healthier. Why would you feed anything? You want it to grow better. So the origin is kimchi. This is Koreans making kimchi. This is, um, you know, cabbage and peppers and salt and um, fermentation, sugar, a little bit of sugar added here. It's fermentation happening. The same thing, except for instead of the kimchi where you're getting the solids, this part you're going to discard. It's this liquids that's left behind that we're going to collect. So it's origins in kimchi, but it's a different part of it that we're using here. So the process, okay, so so this is diving into it of how to do it. You know, basically what what's going to happen, right? This, this recipe is going to take you um, five to seven days, depending and temperature um but it might even be better to go from the other way back but but anyway the process of fermentation at first when you put together um put together things you're going to have the recognition of each other right so i saying the recognition of each other so the translator's note between microbes and ingredients and this is yeah the recognition of each other like the introduction um this is also where you're adding the sugar. Um, this is like, you know, your, your first date type of thing happening. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is probably, um, yeah. So, so, um, so the next part is harmony. You know, after your first date, you see, you see somebody now you can, you're, you start to date then you have fermentation, which is, a uh, you know, getting gifts to them and affection. This is actually like, like here's your fermentation is where your pregnancy is actually happening. And then your affection is when you're, you're rearing the baby. And then, you know, there you go. So through, through this life cycle here, harm Oni. Um, uh, and you can, of you know, salt, you can add up to 10% of the amount of sugar you're going to add can be salt. Um, so 
But but anyway, this is this is kind of like esoteric Eastern slide here, right? Yeah, it's ten percent. And um, but this is kind of esoteric of talking about it. But this is also philosophical. If you think about the process you're doing, instead of just mixing two things together, right? Instead of just cutting things, mixing them, doing it, you're actually thinking of you're cultivating trillions of microbes. This is where you can get into like this other headspace of like amazingness where if you think of this you're you're actually taking the plant material which still has the microbes on it and then you're mixing it with sugar and you're pulling out the juices and then you're taking what was hundreds of thousands of microbes or millions and you're growing them to just absurd proportions as they go through this fermentation step right and this is so so the recognition so so to go through this a little bit more in terms of the recognition that's the introduction of ingredients then harmony there's this is where the microbes are growing out okay so there's actually like a couple scientific phases in this as well of what's happening that step one the recognition you're mixing things together two the microbes are growing they're growing in your material step number three is what they call fermentation and this is why having that gas that one-third airspace above matters because when they grow they use the gas as a quorum sense to understand how many other microbes are in the um, material and as they can quorum sense above then they grow through the harmony stage then they do fermentation where they actually then go into a stable different form the microbes will actually change what they're doing and how they look and polymorphically change from being growing microbes to being stabilized fermentation microbes and it's that fermentation breakdown and things that happen during that fermentation stage where instead of growing as the microbes they're now learning how to eat the material and how to process and how to ferment and how to transform that material and that's when that sort of digestion happens that they're no longer just grow 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 they're actually like consume um ferment digest transform it's actually like an alchemical process right fermentation is the same as like you know calcification and um, burning and all these other things right Ooh. so um excuse me so and then the stabilization the affection where you know that that's you can actually pour you know pour off the microbes and then super saturate them in that affection type of stage um and yeah and so they're saying you know leave leave one third of the airspace for the three vital forces right water air and heat which is that humidity it's just like our atmosphere that grows above us that somehow keeps us going right keeps the plants growing our atmosphere they need an atmosphere within their um jar or vessel that they're fermenting in and this is what I'm talking about for all this to happen properly. If this doesn't happen properly, you don't get as good fermentation. You don't get as good, um, you know, microbes happening. So the more you can recognize you're growing life instead of just like mixing chemicals or making food or something, you know, we just throw things together. You're actually creating a, um, a atmosphere for life to live and process and digest your material. This is the, um, you know think of it that way like now you got this much more responsibility on you of like really you know you're not just throwing things together you're actually building a um, universe if you want to think of it that way right so here's the process of fermentation the spiritual aspect you're about to have trillions of organisms breed and then you know what do you, what kind of plants do you want to collect that's the next slide here um <laughs> Things with energy, right? He talks about plants with lots of chi, right? Um, fast growing, vigorous plants, materials that are in season. So, you know, when it's spring, all the young shoots coming up. Um, when it's, you know, when it's fruits ripe, it should be all, you know, harvested then. Um, and make a juice from itself, so tomatoes back to tomatoes you're going to power up your tomatoes what like what does a tomato want in nutritionally well another tomato so take that tomato ferment get the best essence of it throw the crap away and then spray that back on another tomato where it's already been digested and now you're getting the best food for that plant you know but think of all these weeds that grow really well around you you know plants with energy that are just 
You can't stop them. It's like vines that just strangle everything. Kudzu, right? Something like that. Um, fast growing, vigorous plants, sweet potatoes, um, comfries, materials in season, you know, think about it, whatever you, you always have things around you always. I mean, I guess in the dead of winter, maybe, um, maybe you don't. So sorry, always, I always do in Hawaii. We'll just quantify that. And, um, if not, you know, we'll ship you some maybe. So, um, so he talks about mugwort reason, reason for mugwort being chosen as one of his characteristics of what he wants to choose. Um, you know, he takes the tender points of it. He picks it, um, when, when they're still wet with morning dew. Um, and he'll say that you'll get more in spring than you will in fall than you will in summer. So here in Hawaii, I don't get as much juice. Maybe it's cause it's always summer like conditions. Um, and he av avoids the yellowish growth points. Obviously, when you're picking your plants, avoid the sick, gross parts. Um, and in general, mugwort produces little juice. So he does say even that, you know, because it gives me hardly any juice. I'm like, what the heck? But it's one of the best for pancakes, man. Make pancakes, put this mugwort on there. Oh, thank me later. Or now with a super chat. Ah, you suckers. Uh, I like you guys. It's great to have you guys from around the world joining in, actually. Sharing Master Cho's knowledge, sharing my words, pancakes. Um, can I send you some questions I have about using wild plants in my mix? Just ask them now, man. Just, just do it now. Just go. Um, so there we go. Um, he also likes Oenthajavanica. Yeah, that plant. Whatever this is here, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, it's drop word. It's drop word. I should have just read the first part instead of whatever that was. Um, drop word is great. It's dryland watercress. Looks just like celery. Um, and harvest it from winter to May. Um, spring is the best time to make it. I don't know how you can harvest it in winter to May and then make it in spring. That does not make sense to me. Um, that is weird that he talks about these two contradictory things. Oh, winter to May. Oh, I guess that is spring. Okay, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I am. I am the one that's making a mistake here. Winter to May. That is spring. I just. I don't even think of seasons that way. But yes, that is spring. Okay. So, so make this in spring. He says it twice. <laughs> um no 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 so so uh solar gourmet man if you so someone's asking if i have 20 different vegetables do i have to spray its own food on each one no just take just make like three really good ones and then combine those and and do it don't you know just um just do it that way don't make 20, I mean, 20 of them, unless you really want to, but then I'm not going to open and clean my sprayer between crops. Like I'm just going to make one mix and spray the whole farm, like 40 gallons at a time. You know, it's 80, it takes me 80 gallons to spray the farm, you know? Yeah. Combine and rotate them. Yeah. And use what's abundant. Like we said, what, you know, again, the main principles are plants with energy, fast growing, vigorous ones, materials in season, FPJ, you know, so if you're having trimmings, whatever those things do it, but don't specially make each one. You'll, you'll go nuts. It's, it's, you know, and then here he's saying drop wort has plenty of juice, which accelerates the process of fermentation. So drop wort, you'll get a lot more juice and you got to cut it up two centimeters in length. Um, and again, it says because drop wort produces a lot of juice, add more brown sugar when keeping drop wort FPJ in storage. So He's talking about super saturation, right? After you're done, you're going to need to add more sugar to super saturate this, whereas you're not going to need as much sugar to super saturate maybe a mugwort, which is thicker. Um, so drop wart, another good thing. Bamboo shoots. Um, these grow all over. Just cut these little shoots um, and do peel off the skin when it becomes brownish, right? cut the shoots into small pieces without peeling off the skin. 
So unless it's brown, don't peel it. And pick these little short things, just cut those up. Ferments fast with lots of juice. Um, and when bamboo shoots are soaked too long, white molds may occur due to abnormally fast fermentation. So if you have a white mold starting to grow on the very top of your of your solution, you know fermentation has been um, finished. See, abnormally fast fermentation, right? So fermentation is done, stop, you know, you've gone through that, they've been introduced, they've been harmonized, they've been fermented, now you need to go into the um, storage, which was the, what stage was that? The affection stage of stabilization. So, um, so that can happen with other things such as bananas, banana flowers. It also ferments quick and gets white mold on top. So he also recommends arrowroot or kudzu. Um, I hear this is all over. Um, and this bottom thing is the same bamboo shoots. Um, and he says pick the vines that are newly. So picking the shoots, the tips of these here. And in summer, collect the soft part of the vine, the light colored leaves from the upper part of the vine. You know, so pick all that tender new growth. Kudzu, use that one, he recommends. And the fruit of cedar, so like these little berries here. Um, they always tell you what Jeju is. Yeah, Jeju is pretty famous. Um, so sap oozes out from the tree at the end of June. This is an optimal time for harvesting its fruits. So even things that you can't necessarily eat, you can turn into a plant juice. The cedar has chi, qui, if you're down in Australia. So when the small amount of juice is made from the cedar, it is mixed with other ones, and it will become a very effective reinforcing agent, right? So through all these different um, examples, he's kind of talked about how to use them together. And this one has, you know, so you just need a little bit of this one in there used with other ones when you're when you're mixing them together to use not when you're storing them don't mix them to store but mix them when you're going to use them then this thing is a reinforcing agent right you see how that works like one fpj one can of food can reinforce another it's just like when you eat food right if you take throw a little bit of garlic in there it's like ooh, it tastes so much better right i mean not everyone will agree with that but that's okay um changes the flavor that's for sure so that's the same thing you can do for your plant so mixing the plant juices together and using them and collecting things like this so and then i think he has one more example here of the fruit of the chocolate vine five leaf akebia which i don't i'm not really sure what that is chocolate vine sounds delicious um pick immature fruits in september and it's good to collect when the fruit is immature because mature fruits only have a small amount of juice. So think about that when you're doing this, right? When, when is the most juice going to be in there? That's when you want to harvest it, right? And um, chocolate fruits from the chocolate vining and entwining a lacquer tree are even better. So maybe even other plants around can, can affect how good a plant juice is and how much energy you'll get from a can of food, right? Yeah, so using your local weeds and all those things. And stonemason made it from dandelions, comfrey, stingy nettle bowl, thistle, yarrow, mountain mint. Gonna try water lilies, algae this year. We use three different ferments at a time for spraying. So he combines three. And here's talking about seaweeds, right? Algaes. Um, you know, press all the juice out first with a stone and then, um, you know, ferment, ferment what's left, you know, a light stone. It says don't just like crush it all out, but just, you know, get it so it's not completely wet. Mix it with the sugar. Do this. Reinforces fruit color. Effective for plants growth, right? All these different materials have different properties that they have. Then ripe fruits with no commercial value, such as, you know, fruit has a blemish on it. Well, Let's make a uh, can of food out of that with fruit, you know, and it gives us a bunch of fruit enzymes. 
Um, and so he cuts the he quarters up his fruits. Um, and he also says it's good to use a, a food that has matured for one year for fruits, ripe fruits. Um, apply this in the late reproductive period. So if you have really old canna foods, apply them during that reproductive period. It's like an old wine, you know, it's just like refined. The old people are just sit there and they, they appreciate that. Whereas young people just want to get drunk, right? So think, think of the, all these analogies out there, all these things. And then, uh, oh man, he has even more examples. We haven't even gotten how to do it, but it's, it's already office hour. Well, well, maybe we'll have office hour. I'll finish this example and get to this. Okay. And then we'll just come back and review next time because this lesson could have taken forever to get through. But hopefully you guys are understanding this. It's just like, you know, office hour. If I can connect with somebody, email me if you want to be interviewed. You can get on here or I just go through these things each each time. Um, so... The flower of false acacia, black locust. Um, best time for collecting the flowers when they begin to bloom just before the bees, bees visit to pick honey. So think again when you're going to harvest your plant juice. You know, just before bees visit, you don't want all the honey to be gone, right? Um, use the same amount of brown sugar as the amount of flowers because they have a lot of moisture, right? So the more moist something is, the more water or the more sugar it needs, up to equal amounts. It's usually one third of your plant material, and we'll get we'll get to the recipe. Um, and the flowers that smell better are more effective. So, obviously, more hormones, more enzymes, more goodness in there. That's what you're trying to collect, right? When you're thinking of this, you're making a custom plant food. So think of what you want to get, connoisseur type stuff, or just what's abundant around, right? I make a lot of stuff out of banana because I have a lot of bananas, and it works really well. Um, so th child liquid, I don't know what the heck that means, but, um, you know, making, uh, I think this is actually the liquid you want to use when it's, um, changeover period, like when it's getting pregnant, when it's going through that pregnancy fa phase, um, using thinned out fruit or the auxiliary bud of general crops. So using young immature fruit or flowers to make the reproductive food. I think that's what they mean by child liquid. Like when you're making a child, when you're transitioning there, that's when you put out the, um, these. So, so those, those are, I mean, that was long. I, 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 I should probably, you know, before I get into one to collect and all this, I'm, I'm going to leave that for the recipe for next time, but I'll just go over a review a little bit of child liquid, you know, um, materials that can help your plant transition through and make children right? Unripe fruits, flowers. That's one of them. Thinking of black locusts, they got a lot of power and energy. Um, ripe fruits you can use. Seaweeds, algaes, um, you know, fruits that are around you that are, that are abundant. Um, cedar, plants with a lot of energy in them. Kui. Um, kudzu, something that's just super invasive, um, donkey, donkey rhubarb or, um, Japanese knotweed, um, something like that. Like think of those things, um, bamboo shoots, sweet potatoes, things that are growing really vigorously, um, dropwort, something that's like celery-ish, like rhubarb, dropwort, um, um, angelica type stuff, um, or, um, mugwort, herbal, like, like rosemaries, um, mugworts, um, you know, all these things have, uh, you know, qui, they, they're fast growing. The materials are in season. They're made from the same crop. All these things together are there and, and good to grow and to grab. So then you want to create this environment for this and we'll get into the recipe and we're essentially making kimchi. Oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> you know, you're Korean when you get salivate from just looking at a picture of kimchi um and again this is what it is right it's a fermented extract of the plants <laughs> and it helps crops absorb nutrients it's food dang it it's food so i'm gonna go back to this screen over here we'll burst this one Whoa, look at that 
Um, and I want to thank Master Cho for, for, you know, teaching me enough to be able to translate this for you. Um, Pure KNF Foundation, again, um, check out purekf.org. Oh my gosh, and it looks like our certificate ran out. Don't check it out right now. Um, but Or knfsupport.com, also there. Um, oh, so much to maintain when you do all the web infrastructure and everything. But want to thank you mostly for tuning in. I hope this nourished your mind, your body, your actions, your food, your growing better food, corners of your mouth. I hope, you know, if you want to share this, get it out to more people, whatever. Um, if you don't, whatever, that's fine too. Um, we're all we're all going through our different phases. Um, I will continue to be here office hours, Sundays, looking forward to interviewing more guests, looking forward to doing more things. But I always have that presentation to pull up. It's like 300 slides or something. I'm only 92 into it. So it may last a whole year. I don't know. Um, it may not. We always have things to share and i hope this was worth your time your value um you know do the youtube things if you want and or um you know grow a garden do something nice um thanks for the thanks for the super chats bird and stone mace and you guys always hold it down financially even though some people are like you're just all about money it's like man everyone's all about money man the world costs money right now but get sovereign get a farm get a cow <laughs> and as always, friends, friends, family around the world, long live the natural farmer. Thank you. Aloha. I'm going to slide down this curtain. You ready? Goodbye.